In this brief tutorial, we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of annotating video in a Legion control. Now, before we get started annotating, we should take a look at some of the fundamentals of the user interface and get ourselves familiar with how to navigate around. So here, of course, we have the video itself. This is one of the um, sample clips that's included with the sample CSV when you create assets to annotate. Um, this short basketball clip we're going to use. Over here we have some of the basic viewing controls like brightness and contrast and zooming and fitting to screen, uh, turning labels on and off or uh, muting audio if your video happens to have audio. We're going to be creating entities and localizing them with bounding boxes and key points. So we have the drawing tools over here. Uh, further to the left we have a hotkey reference when you start using the annotation tool and you become familiar with it, it's good to start using hotkeys. They're one of the best ways to increase your efficiency. Your administrator can configure annotation guidelines that show up over here. Um, so these will be specific to your project. And there we have the playback controls for moving um, at a frame increment, uh, moving one frame at a time, playing, stopping, and moving to the end and the beginning of the video. We also have here the entity timeline and the entity panel. So we're going to be creating um, entities for tracking these basketball players and the basketball itself. As we create these entities, they're going to show up in this panel and we're going to be able to view and set different properties of these entities like their classifications and their relationships and also track the location of the objects in the scene. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to start by tracking um, one of the players. Now, when annotators do video annotation, most find that it's helpful to annotate um, one entity at a time. So instead of you know, drawing a bounding box on every player and trying to annotate every player at once, just focus on one, track it through the video, then go back to the beginning and take the next um, entity that you want to track and then start with it and carry it all the way through. So for the sake of brevity, we're just going to annotate a section of this video. We're not going to do a whole lot. Um, and we're just going to start with the player. So we're going to um, localize this player with a bounding box. So I'll just go ahead and click to draw a bounding box. If there's only one entity type, for bounding box, then you just click and draw. If there were more than one type of entity, you'd just be prompted to pick the one that you want to draw. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw this bounding box. And now that I've drawn the box, you'll see that the entity shows up here in the um, entity panel. And so we have um, basically classifications and properties of this the entity. It's in frame, and so it's marked in frame with this location on frame zero. Um, you can give it a nickname if you want. This is really helpful for basically tagging entities or giving them descriptive names that make it helpful for reviewers to identify them. And we're also going to be setting a classification to indicate the kind of action that the player is performing. Is the player dribbling or passing or shooting? In this case, um, the player is not dribbling at this particular point in the video, so we're going to leave this classification empty um, for now. We'll set it a little bit later. Um, and then we're also going to take a look at um, associations. So one of the things we're going to do is track an association between the player and the ball. And we'll set that um, a little bit later after we do a bit of annotation on this player. Uh, let's first start talking about um, annotating or tracking the motion of the player. So in this case, um, let's go ahead and scrub forward a little bit. And you can see that uh, he's not dribbling, so we're not going to set this classification to dribbling. He is going to pass in just a bit. So let's go ahead and start tracking some motion. Um, using these playback controls, I can just play back the video. Um, I can play it back at full speed or other kinds of speed increments. I can click here to go back to the beginning. I can move forward one frame at a time. Um, there's a seek increment that will, in this case, I've got it set to move me five frames at a time. This is really handy 
um, if you're tracking motion, you can basically skip frames and let a feature called interpolation track the motion between the adjustments you make to the items that you're tracking in the scene. So if you're, for example, annotating a scene with cars on a roadway and there's a lot of smooth linear motion, it's very easy to maybe skip 20 frames at a time. In a scene like this basketball video, I might want to only skip two frames at a time or five frames at a time because the motion is going to be more erratic. And you'll see an example of that as we get started. So let me go ahead and skip back to the beginning. And let's go five frames at a time and track some motion. So I'll just go ahead and click to skip five frames ahead. We'll make an adjustment to this bounding box. And you'll see that that sets a position keyframe at that location. We'll go ahead and skip um, another increment forward. And we'll just keep doing that to track the motion of this player. And we'll do this for a little bit, and then we'll talk about setting a classification. So I'll just keep going. And I'm going to say, in this particular example, let me go a frame or two ahead. Uh, let's basically go five frames ahead. Not quite ready to pass. He's almost there. I'll skip ahead. And let's say this is the point at which the player is starting to pass, so the action begins. So I want to basically mark that that action has started. So I'll go ahead and we have this uh, classification called action. I'll click on the link and I can just choose the attribute to indicate what action is beginning. Now that sets a keyframe um, right by the classification that I just set. And this indicates when that classification begins. And that will persist until I reset it to another value. So just for sake of argument, let's go ahead and let's skip forward a bit until, we'll skip back, until the next player has possession of the ball. So we're going to say that this player is in the act of passing until the next player um, takes possession of the ball. So we'll basically go to uh, frame 47, and then we'll say on that frame, we're going to, for this particular player, set that classification to nothing. So we're going to set it to um, empty. So here you can clearly see I've been changing the position of the player. Then on this particular frame, I indicate that the player is passing. Then I skip a bunch of frames until that action ceases, and I set the classification to another value. Um, now let's go ahead and skip back a bit, and let's finish tracking some of this motion. We'll continue to make adjustments, localizing this player. And we'll go ahead and skip one more increment forward. Now, one thing that you'll notice here, I'll go back a couple frames, is that that player actually um, went out of frame. So that player basically disappeared from the scene. And let's say based on our annotation guidelines, you can still see a little bit of the player, but let's say when the player is almost completely out of frame, we consider that player out of frame and the player basically no longer exists in the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and say that that player is out of frame. So this is a built-in classification that allows me to essentially 
indicate that this entity is out of the frame and no longer exists. And so we've set that uh, classification there on that last position frame and the player is out of frame and will be marked as out of frame until we change that classification. Now, let's go back to the beginning of the video and let's talk about adding another entity, in this case, the ball. And we will um, do a little bit of motion tracking of the ball, but we'll also focus on setting up a relationship between the ball and the player. So if we look here at our player, we've tracked the player's motion um, from where the player entered the scene, various positions that we've marked. We could further fine tune these positions, but we're, we're letting interpolation do a lot of the work. Um, the motion's not too linear, but we'll get, um, we'll get a fair degree of accuracy skipping every five frames. And then when the player disappears, the player's set out of frame. We've also indicated where the player started passing and where that passing action ended. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is create a ball, um, or a ball entity. And in this particular example, I, I chose a key point um, just to kind of give us a little bit of variety. So we'll just mark a key point. And you'll see just, um, just as it was with the uh, player, the entity's created here in the timeline panel. It's marked in frame. Um, other than being in frame or out of frame, there are no classifications for the ball. And um, there is a, an association we can set. So an association is basically a relationship between two entities. So this is useful for a lot of scenarios like sports and retail and any kind of situation where you're tracking how two things are related. So a person's holding a shopping item, or in this case, a basketball player um, is in possession of the basketball. So in this case, I'll go ahead and associate uh, the ball with this particular player. And then we have that association set there. And just like I did with the um, player, I can go ahead and skip a number of frames forward. And I can just start, um, in this case, go ahead and start um, tracking the motion of that ball. And we'll do a little bit of that, but we'll also show setting and unsetting that relationship too. So let's go ahead and track the motion of the ball. And we'll kind of breeze through this very quickly. And let's say by our rules, the first player has possession of the ball until the second player actually has physical possession. So what we'll do now is we'll go a few frames forward. And let's say at this point, um, we're going to say that this player um, no longer has possession of the ball. And you'll see that's marked there. So here we can see the duration of that association. And let's go ahead and draw another basketball player. We'll draw player two. There we go. And we'll go ahead and mark the ball as associated with player two. And that's also going to show up in this timeline. So here you can clearly see tracking the motion of the player, tracking the action of the player, tracking the association between the player and the ball until that possession changes and it's been taken possession of by the um, second player. And now we'll go back to the beginning of the video and we can go ahead and play this forward. Now we did some pretty coarse motion tracking but it should be relatively accurate and we can go ahead and see this and then um, we've got all the localization there and we can see, actually, we went a little bit beyond where we tracked. And here we are at that frame where we started tracking the second player and changing the classification to indicate that the second player has taken possession. And all of that's displayed here in the timeline, which is really helpful for 
um, QA persons and reviewers. So they can clearly see where events begin and end. And this clearly tells me that these events were set on the proper frames where the action um, began and where it ended. Um, another kind of tip about using nicknames, all of these players are wearing kind of the same uniform. So using nicknames or using friendly names can be really helpful for reviewers. Um, another handy tool in the user interface as well is the ability to um, keep your playhead position, but also scrub back and forth uh, when you're watching the video. So I'm gonna turn this option on for mouse panning. And with that option on, I can basically keep my play position, but I can move and scrub through the video. So I can see, okay, here's the point at which possession of the ball changes, but I can also scrub backwards and scrub forwards to get a view of what's upcoming and what happens after an action is set. So this is really helpful when you're skipping multiple frames. Let's say you're skipping five, 10, 15, 20 frames at a time, and you wanna know that you're on the right frame to set an action or a classification. You can just look a little bit behind and look a little bit ahead, and then if you want to, reset your location or just keep scrubbing until you find the right point to you know, change the position of an object or change your classification. And so with that said, that's basically the fundamentals of annotating a video where we're tracking entities and we're setting classifications and relationships. We looked a little bit about navigating um, through the user interface and some tips and tricks on how to use it efficiently. That should get you all the way through a video and you'll just become more efficient um, as you become familiar with the tool, should really consider using hotkeys as well. That can really speed you up. Um, once your work is complete, um, you can just click Submit, and clicking Submit will um, submit the task, and it will go into a review state where it can be approved or the person reviewing it can submit corrections. Uh, if you are just playing around or trying something out or you start annotations and decide you don't want to keep them, you can click discard. Be careful about this because when you click discard, it will delete all of your annotations. So you might have a, a lot of work put into a long video and you want to be careful about that. If you want to take a break, you can click save and leave the window open and that will save your work. The work is also auto-saved in the background every five minutes, so we have you covered there, so you don't really have to worry about it. If you wanna close this window, like let's say you wanna pick this task back up tomorrow and close your browser, just click save and exit, and that will close the annotation window, and then you can come back in, open that record back up, and start annotating all over again. So with that said, um, that's the fundamentals of annotating videos in Allegiant Control.